I've had about enough of using claw hammers around the workshop, and I think my chisels and holdfasts have had about enough of them as well. It's time we built ourselves a proper joiner's mallet. And by proper, I mean something novel that will upset the purists. I don't want just any old joiner's mallet. I want something with some <laughs> pizzazz. I went rooting around in my local landfill and found some nice maple, ebony, and brass. We're gonna take these materials and turn an arguably perfect ancient design into something complicated. to high precision cuts, the bandsaw just isn't cut out for that sort of thing. So for the mating surfaces, I'm employing more primitive methods. It's not critical these parts be airtight for performance, but visible gaps in the work will stick out like a sore thumb. Okay folks, here's where things start to get interesting. If you have any experience with complicated glue-ups, you know this can be, well, complicated. I know this because I tried to be a hero and glue up everything all loosey-goosey on this here prototype. The results weren't the worst, but I think I have a better solution. Dowels provide some much needed guidance for this here glue up. It takes a little longer to set up, but that's time you don't have to spend cleaning a gluey, uneven mess. Now we just need to add the other head body. As you may have noticed from the thumbnail, the ends are separate pieces that add some visual interest to the top of the mallet. At least I think so. The surface of these ends should be end grain, because that's where the wood fibers are strongest, and it needs to be able to stand up to a life of repeated smacking. So it turns out this log is blighted and is not going to work. I do have this nice piece of bird's eye maple. It's too thin for the mallet ends, but if I cut it up and do a couple of bookend laminations, that should get us there. If it's stupid and it works, then it ain't stupid. I'm planing this end grain with a very shallow depth of cut, and I'm being careful not to exit the other side of the work as this runs the risk of blowout. As soon as the blade starts to chatter, it needs to be resharpened. Now we're getting somewhere. I just feel like it's missing something. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. I just feel like it's m I don't know about you, but I'm a sucker for brass. I love the way it looks, the way it feels, the way it tastes. I think some brass inlays and decorations will really add a nice touch. So let's give it a shot. 
Alternatively, I could have set the handle inlays before I set the handle laminates, but the laminates were cut slightly oversized and I was concerned I wouldn't be able to keep everything perfectly centered during the glue up. My original plan for this was drilling these holes all the way through, but after some experimenting with driving this brass dowel, I found out that it gets stuck in a pretty shallow amount of wood. So at the expense of ruining this thing, I'm going to drill four shorter holes rather than two long holes, cut this brass up. It'll be a bit more work, but I think it'll be a safer bet. According to the Back Alley Luthier forums, brass has been known to have some trouble sticking with conventional gluing methods. The consensus is to use CA glue, which is short for cyanoacrylate, and these inlays should have no trouble sticking around for a long time. On a lighter wood, I might make more of an effort to keep it clean of brass dust and shavings, but there shouldn't be any problems with this ebony. The blue tape is there to shield the wood from the file. I'm adding chamfers to the handle using my trusty spoke shave. Not only will this make it more comfortable to hold, but it'll accentuate the two different colors of wood to add some overall depth to the piece. The ebony on the handle is proving to be quite problematic. The grain is curled over and tear out is unavoidable, even with the sharpest of blades. This is where a good card scraper is crucial. I've been staring at the spike on the end of this mallet for the past few days now, and I'm ready to make an executive decision on it. My intentions with this was to have a place to tie off a strap and have some symmetry with the top, but it was just kind of awkwardly small and let's be honest, it was just going to break off anyways. With that out of the way, the only major shaping left is the pyramid spike on the top of the head. I gotta admit, the urge to smack stuff around with this thing is becoming irresistible. The last step before finishing on any project is what the legendary Chris Schwarz refers to as make pretty. Every square inch of this thing needs to be gone through, and every imperfection needs to be erased. I've been having a bit of trouble keeping the maple parts clean. The ebony sawdust is super fine and it gets into everything and it doesn't want to come out. I can clean it up with a card scraper alright, but I still have some further sanding to do around the brass areas. So when I get done with the section, I cover it with blue tape to put it in a sort of stasis until the rest of the mallet's cleaned up. The oil of choice for today is walnut oil. It's a lighter hue so it won't darken your work like boiled linseed or other oils. And it's food safe, so if all else fails, we have ourselves a fancy meat cleaver.
This is the last time it's ever going to look this good. So I got to take advantage of the photo op while I can. The beauty in making your own tools is that you can always claim any imperfections in the build or just wear from use. But either way, I couldn't be happier with the way this turned out. As always, thanks for sticking around this long. I hope you enjoyed this production. May your blades stay sharp, your mallet strike true, and may quality be there in all that you do. Godspeed, folks. If you like this mallet and want to try building one for yourself, I have detailed plans available on my website for purchase. These come complete with a cut list, printable templates, and assembly instructions with additional exclusive video content. So check those out in the link down below if you're interested.